Okay, John, we'll turn it over to you. It's all yours. Sounds good. All right, thank you. And, and thanks for having me, Ryan and John. Um, just so I'll go, I'll go and good, give a quick background about myself, um, maybe a little bit while I'm here and just a quick overview of, of, of what I'm, what I'm going to kind of show here. Um, I am currently a behavioral scientist at Capital One, uh, but recently graduated or recently defended my dissertation uh, through GW. So I've been doing some research um, over the last several years as part of my dissertation um, and, and have attended GW uh, for, for my PhD. Um, and so uh, a lot of my research is really focused on, on um, it is, well, my degree is in industrial organizational psychology. And so a lot of my research is uh, focused on how people react to technology in the workplace. Um, and over the last several years, been really interested in how people make decisions with data um, and particularly, you know, partic like the decision aids that use algorithms or, or complex uh, calculations to help people make better decisions. And so um, what I'm going to kind of talk about um, is my dissertation research that looked at how people used a, an algorithm to um, have to make forecasts um, and in, and in ways that were manipulated to transparency of the algorithm. And so um, where this comes in with our shiny is I actually was able to use our shiny to create a, a I guess my uh, kind of uh, doctoral students version of a decision aid um, in order to implement it in an experiment. So I'm going to go, I'm going to kind of walk through that and talk about that a little bit. Um, and then kind of show, you know, kind of how I implemented it. So um, I think first thing to say is, again, this is experiment. And so I, I did uh, um, obtain the sample population um, or the participants from MTurk. And so um, it sounds like I think Ryan and John, you guys have had a, a video already in terms of how to, uh, how you might implement a research study on, on uh, MTurk. And so I think that um, one, it's hopefully, you know, uh, folks that are that are seeing this can kind of go back, but just to kind of give you a little bit of insight in terms of of what I asked people to do and how this looked on MTurk. Um, you know, this is a typical hit that that uh, uh, MTurkers would see. You know, kind of browsing through uh, their hits, and so kind of gave folks a little bit of background of the study, basically just saying that just interested in algorithms and decision making, giving them a sense of kind of like what they would be doing. Um, and so, and then you know, kind of in typical. Uh, MTurk fashion, this didn't actually occur on, on MTurk, this actually occurred on, in Qualtrics. And so what the participant would have seen um, was a uh, link to, to, to Qualtrics to actually uh, complete the experiment. For the experiment itself, I'm, I'll kind of walk through, but the idea was that they, they would be essentially playing the part of a, a loan application or, or loan, um, uh, um, sorry, a like a loan officer that would be evaluating people's applications for loans and either approving or denying them, or at least giving, in this case, give, you know, kind of forming a probability that people would default on their loan. Um, and so what I did is I actually pulled some data from Kaggle, uh, which is a, the a lending tree data set, if anybody's uh, been on Kaggle, where you could find the same data set and basically filtered by home loans and pulled that data to, to have, actually have as the, the data set for, for the algorithm, the, predict, the predictive algorithm, and then actually use that data to uh, form uh, the, the data set, but then, and then simulated the actual app profiles based upon the, the, the relationships and the data there. So the, the profiles themselves were fake and then ran it through the model again to, pre, pre, uh, to give probabilities that someone would, um, to default on loan. So I'll kind of show that, but again, the, the, the task was a forecasting task and I'll walk through that. So participants would have seen, um, this, um, uh, this link, you know, if they, you know, to opt into the, the, the survey, uh, on call tricks and then later they'd return to do their code once they completed. So, um, hey, John, could you, yeah. um, make that larger and also maybe zoom in so the fonts are easier to read just cause absolutely, uh, on YouTube, this will probably be really, really small font. Cool. No, thanks um, for the prompt there. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, how's that? That's a little easier to read. Yeah. There you go. Awesome. Awesome. I'll pause for a sec. Are there any, are there any questions either Ryan or John that, uh, before I jump into the call trick side? Looks good. Yeah, I'm looks following. Good. Okay, awesome, awesome. So what they um, and I'm kind of giving the abbreviated version here. Um, you know, the first give them a prompt on whether or not they're employed or not, so they'd have to say yes. They would have uh, been given a uh, and always usually do a capture here when I'm doing uh, Qualtrics. Um, let's see if it has. So yeah, they would have gotten kind of the background of the study. Um, you know, all the all the stuff that you have to do with IRB. So all the IRB stuff. I'm kind of going a little bit quicker here. Um, you know, have a demographic survey as well. Um, so they would have gone through and, and done this. I think I have, yep. And questions, yep. So they would have had to fill something out. Um, 
other I think I've probably changed these for the, the purposes of, of kind of showing, but Okay, so uh, they would have kind of gotten to the task. Oh, sorry. They also had a number, uh, some individual differences, uh, scales that you know that were important for my study and for uh, the the research and the hypothesis. Um, so they would have completed those. Let's go with this. And then for this particular study, what I was really interested in is whether uh, numeracy or the ability to to, to understand. Uh, numbers, probabilities, um, and uh, just general um, uh, math, uh, not math ability, but just the ability to work with numbers. So this is a basically a numeracy scale. I think I have to put some things in here um, that they would have to complete um, as again, kind of a, the, a, a predictor variable in the model. Uh, Cool. Um, and so what you'll see is there, oops, it's probably the wrong task. And then what they did is they did a, a practice task. Give me one second here. I'm just going to kind of quickly walk through the task before we go into the how everything is built. Sorry, I'm sorry in there. Okay, so they would have been given instructions, and then they would have been given uh, a profile of 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 a um, in this in this case what we're seeing is a GPA task, but they 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 did this as kind of a, a practice um, where they would get different information about you know to do to do their prediction. They would then give an input. Um, in this case, you know, predicting a GPA. So this is like a slider. And then they would give a confidence interval around, you know, where they're like 90% confident that they that their um, prediction or their, their forecast was in this range. Um, so once they do that, then they go to where they would actually see an algorithm's recommendation. So what we're seeing here is I varied the transparency of the algorithm um, to where they would either have nothing, they would have a medium transparency, which I'll talk a little bit about, and then a full transparency. Um, so they would get this recommendation and they would give their, their final, their, their final um, forecast. And they would go through 14 trials of this. Um, now, in the uh, full transparency uh, condition, which I'll show you here, they actually received more information about the algorithm. They actually give instructions for um, that they could actually go through and look at different uh, tabs with, uh, within the decision aid here. Um, and they could actually like inspect the information. And so um, part of my dissertation was about like what algorithm transparency is. And so I operationalized it in a way in which um, thinking about the, the, the out inputs, throughputs and outputs of an algorithm, uh, which obviously would vary by algorithm. And so what we're seeing here um, is, is essentially a shiny app um, that um, I'll kind of talk about the, the background here in a second, but where people could go through and, and get, you know, they could see the data that was used in the model. Um, they could see the data, the metadata, the data about the data. Um, and then actually the code that, that I used for the actual algorithm itself, you know, they could see, you know, if you're, if you're in, obviously I'm sure there's some R coders here, you could see the different packages and things like that. Um, uh, and then they could also see, you know, an explanation of the algorithm and kind of like what it does. Um, and then some, some resources in terms of like, what was the actual, you know, algorithm and the mathematics behind it. Um, and then again, the source code for, for, uh, you know, processing the, the, the uh, in this case, it was a logistic regression model. Um, and then give them the outputs in terms of the, uh, the predicted uh, output from the, the algorithm, uh, again, with the profile, give it you know, different things like the, how accurate the model was um, and information about um, you know, what, what was the outputs in terms of things like, like weights um, and then uh, and, you know, things like, like importance of predictors. So giving them just more information about the different predictors and what the algorithm kind of, how it put the information together and then even more evaluation metrics the assumption here wasn't that everybody would would know this. Um, they would be able to kind of read through um, through you know as they went through, um, and it wasn't expected that you know we would have necessary experts. We did measure people's familiarity with algorithms and also the particular domains for the forecasting study. I'm sorry for the forecasting experiment. Um, and so this is uh, you know this is kind of uh, wasn't expected that they, that they would know all this, but 
Um, so again, this is kind of in Qualtrics what they would see. Um, one other thing I'll point out is that you know this, a lot of this was just kind of a, a, a doctoral student trying to kind of make it happen on the fly. So it's it's a little bit uh, um, you know kind of uh, kind of scrappy, but for the most part, what I've done here um, is embed in an iframe. Um, the where is it? Um, just a link here to to, a, to an HTML output for the Shiny app. Um, so I'll, I'll kind of pause for a second. So this is basically what a, a participant would have seen. Um, Ryan, do you, Ryan or John, is there any questions, or, or is that pretty clear? So would these change depending on the specifics of the case that they are reviewing, or is this static primarily? Yeah, uh, primarily static other than the things that would be specific for the, the particular trial or the particular uh, application. So they would have the information. This would change, for instance, where it has the individual application and the profile and the predicted value. Um, things like the, the model accuracy and, and this information would be static for the algorithm in terms of these were just, you know, okay. would be. Um, but yeah, the, the only thing it would change would things specific for that trial, um, but the other information that was kind of like the overall kind of view on the algorithm would not change. Okay, great. Cool. Um, all right, so gonna kind of now get into kind of like the, the Shiny app itself and kind of what I did. Um, let's see here, I should be able to. Um, so if, if you're familiar with Shiny, what's kind of nice about Shiny is you, there's a lot of different options in terms of uh, things like layouts. Um, if you notice here, essentially I'm just using the tabs uh, to kind of create just a little interface here. Um, and, 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 and with Shiny, what's nice is you can display, you know, text, uh, you can uh, in, in, add images uh, into the, into the um, uh, each little uh, section. Um, and then, you know, in, in the actual Shiny, as you, you might know, that you can actually run the code. What we're seeing here is more a static version of it, like an HTML output, um, mainly because I couldn't, you know, integrate the, uh, my R server with uh, Qualtrics as easily. But um, in terms of the actual, uh, shiny code itself. Again, it's it's mainly focused on um, you know creating like a, a panel, and I'm not sure um, how how much to go into here. And I'm I'm happy to share the share the code, but essentially use Shiny to create um, kind of a visual interface that also had kind of code integrated with it um, in order to to run the model. So you'll see you know it's it's rendering things like plots, um, and it, and it has mostly for this I'm kind of a, integrating you know the data so it comes in brings in CSV data and and, and shows it as a table um, and then um, let's see here I can't remember if I'm running the model in this one but um, but basically is a, is a way to kind of you know plot and show different pieces of information about the algorithm so I'm not sure how much we want to go into there and I'll kind of show you like what I did downstream with it but um, this is essentially the shiny app that I ran so each person when they're doing it so let's say i'm a participant in your study i get through the training ones and i get to this one and i do 14 of these you said my 14 are each um created on the fly then or did you create like a set number of them because you said you just use a static html of it yeah, I wasn't sure if you like created them all first or whether these were actually being created on the fly as people did it. Yeah, no, that's a good point. So I think for this to, to make it run, um, and I tried a couple of different ways where I actually ran a, a R Studio server and then piped that URL in. Um, and uh, one, I think it was to in order to do this kind of study, I did the between. I think I think it was like the connections and also the number of apps. I think like I think I would have had to pay more, and also like I just I, I did a couple of time a uh, couple run throughs where it wasn't necessarily working just right. And so what I did was actually with what Shiny is nice is uh, you know particularly something like this, you can go through and where is and so what I did is I just knitted to an HTML file. Um, where is it? Uh, I should have it there. Um, one second. And I've, I've been one of those folks too, that this was one of the last times I've, I've actually in my job used Python so much more. So it's been a while since I've actually looked at the code, but generally you can basically um, compile it down to an HTML file. And that's what I ended up doing. And then I just uploaded the, and I'll show you the files as well.
here we go. I guess just to note, like there are, you can get um, tabs and stuff like that on a static HTML page. So a lot of the features that Shiny is really great for in terms of the user interface, there are ways of getting those now in just a static page. And um, so if you have something that's like computationally expensive, you could do that up front, uh, save it as a single page and get a lot of those features. I only really use Shiny now if I have to actually have computing power during the session. Like if they click on something and it needs to change in, you know, dynamically, then I'll have to use a Shiny app. But I get away with a lot of things now that are interactive, but they're just in the browser. I think that I think that's pretty much what I, I think I, I kind of landed on there is that like mm -hmm. doing that upfront work. Mm -hmm. I think it, maybe that's how you're describing it, where um, I, I kind of did that and was able to run the model. But and this wasn't necessarily computational expensive. So I think maybe there, there's a little it deviates from there a little bit. But but yeah, it's a case where I just needed to kind of show like the final output. Um, and so again, kind of compiled these all down to um, uh, to HTML files. Yep. Um, and so I, I definitely agree with that. Like it's, it, it's so, and it, you know, it, it's easy to do um, as far as the, uh, you know, the, the, um, where the, that NIP project process. And I think also just maybe ended up making them just an R markdown. Um, uh, but where this is just the HTML file that then I, up, I uploaded to like an AWS account um, and then just took those URLs and embedded them in each of the trials uh, in, in, in Qualtrics, so. So that's kind of the from shiny to kind of again kind of kind of scrappy in the sense that I was kind of I'm probably was learning the hard way kind of what you were just describing John where what I thought might have worked you know or might be kind of uh, easy or um, you know conceptually is like oh yeah that should be not a problem and I think I probably just ran into roadblocks where it's like and then I probably found the HTML like knit and and and, and kind of breaking these out to different formats that I could at least show in the experiment so. It's a good example of what might have been really cool wasn't really <laughs> that necessary. Absolutely, like to ha have it live, do it would been really interesting, but yeah. it wasn't necessary for your goals. Yep, and actually, I think Ryan, you're probably one of the. And I should mention Ryan was on my committee that early on was like, you know, a good the best dissertation is a done dissertation, and I, I was definitely <laughs> keeping that in mind. Um, I would also, I think, kind of tag along with that in the sense of one thing I would have liked to do is maybe embed some JavaScript into these H, you know, in the HTML, and you can in, embed. I don't know. I was trying to figure out exactly where I would do it because you can do it in Qualtrics. But the idea of, can I can I capture the clicks like what people are doing on the on the uh, on the on the page? Would have loved to do that. Uh, but it was one of those things that I think in terms of the the intensiveness, the resources, and my objective, it didn't make a lot of sense. It also could have probably ended up like, you know, where, you know, it sounds really cool, probably something to do it, but uh, it might, it might take in a while to get there. So yeah, definitely. This is, I think a good demonstration of, uh, I think there's um, uh, kind of upper bounds in terms of how much uh, effort and energy you might spend for, for particular kind of things. So, um, and I guess maybe some of the punchlines here is that Again, I kind of varied the, 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 the medium transparency. Basically, they just didn't have all the tabs. And what I did was actually a pilot study with my lab where I just showed, I think, like five or six different versions of, the, of this interface and just had people rate how, you know, give them what my definition of was algorithm transparency was and then have them rate like on a scale of like one to 10 how transparent that particular interface was. And so they would cycle through um, and rate these different interfaces. And so I just took the the, the one in the middle, the one that I knew was full transparency, and then uh, the, the version that had no information. And so uh, in, in the medium transparency, you just wouldn't see all this information. Um, and in terms of what I found, um, the, for the medium and the full transparency, there was a difference in terms of, so I guess maybe step back. What I was measuring was people's uh, utilization of the algorithm. And how I measured that was just how much they actually changed their forecast after seeing the algorithm's output or recommendation. Um, and so, and there's a calculation in, in that I took from, uh, there's a literature on how people take advice and there's some measures for, to try to capture how people actually adjust their either forecasts or predictions after, after receiving advice or, or recommendations. And so I use that as, as my outcome variable for this study. Um, and I did find that, 
you know, in giving people some more information did increase it slightly. Um, and, but there wasn't a big difference between the medium and the uh, full transparency conditions in terms of utilization. Uh, but what was interesting is I also asked them how, what was their help to rate the transparency the algorithm ac after seeing it, then also after um, uh, giving the definition and people varied and they weren't, there wasn't a lot of variance in terms of between these different conditions, which I thought was interesting. But uh, so punchline, you know, a little bit of an uptick, but when we really account for things like numeracy, uh, I measured confidence after every trial. Um, there's it, what we tend to see is that as people were more confident um, and uh, lower in numeracy that they didn't use the, they didn't utilize the algorithm as much or did not alter their, uh, their predictions as much. Um, and as they were higher in numeracy, um, and, and they, they tended to use the algorithm more. Um, so it's, it saw some different patterns there, uh, depending on uh, their level of numeracy and then also the, the level of transparency in the algorithm. So can you go back to the algorithm? Yeah, and that tab. Uh, um, this one? That tab. So this is actually then how it was calculated. Yep. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, in terms of the, you know, from a, from the the logistic regression perspective, perspective, and then you know, just the back, the back end stuff that you know probably people wouldn't take a lot of time. But you know, if you really wanted to, if you were evaluating the algorithm, if you, maybe your job was to just you know better understand like what it what it was doing, or maybe like you know say was this the right approach, or you know all those type of functions you could go in and so. You know what's nice about R is it's 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 a couple of lines. You know, it's a I had built out the the data set and then you know these are all the variable names. But you know, it's a you know few lines of code and then you know pulling out the 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 predicted uh, um, uh, out uh, probabilities was also you know there's that's kind of captured in here. There's a little bit of tuning of the algorithm in terms of to make it more accurate. You could actually like change you know a fifty. 50-50 uh, probability uh, is may not necessarily make sense for something where it's like people default on loans, you know, it's not a 50-50 thing that people actually do it less than you would, you know, with a lot of different things. And so, you know, there's some different um, uh, parameters here that are kind of changed um, to kind of optimize the algorithm. Um, and so, and so they could go and see, you know, based upon, uh, you know, and in the comments here, they could see like, you know, what that was doing. Um, and so that's kind of what you would see. But as you know, like, um, or if you've ever done logistic regression or, or a simple, you know, supervised learning algorithm, the code itself isn't a lot. Um, and then same with, um, let's see here, you know, the code, to, you know, some of the output you get is, is pretty straightforward. So yeah, that, this is the kind of information they would have access to, you know, not quite sure if, if how much they utilize this to make any of their decisions. That's great. All right. So yeah, um, happy to answer any other questions. But um, other than that, happy also. Uh, thank you guys for for letting me share this, and and hopefully, um, it gives some kind of insight into how you can uh, um, implement or 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 leverage uh, Shiny to um, to do experiments or or what you might do with it. Yeah. So I guess now that you're done, looking back, I, from a coding perspective, from I mean, not your whole dissertation, but from yeah this aspect of the dissertation. Would you do it with R shiny again? Would you, or what would be like your yeah. takeaway from this? Yeah, that's a good, good question. I think, I, I mean, I'm trying to think like what else I might've used um, and been able to, um, uh, to kind of, you know, kind of meet the goals here. And so I'm, I think there's there's other th I, I think there's probably ways you could build this out in something like a Python. Um, gosh, I'm trying to think if I think from an experimentation perspective, this is probably probably pretty good. I'm, I, I probably would would use it again. Um, I think if I was actually trying to implement something that helped people make better decisions, I might uh, might do some different things or maybe rely on some different technology. Um, but I, I honestly, I don't think I have a a great answer to that. Um, other than I think uh, I, it served me well, I think for this for this case, but yeah, and you could have done more interaction within this shiny. Yeah, it says Quatrix has the sliders and stuff built in for getting the data you wanted. I guess it makes sense. 
Um, yeah, yeah, I've, I've definitely seen. Um, so you're like saying like you, you could pull, you could do an experiment in Shiny and, and pull the uh, the responses and and go through the whole process. You could build that out in Shiny. Like that's what you're saying, right, Ryan? Yeah, in theory, you could do the whole thing without Quadrix. Yep. Um, yeah. But Quadrix just makes some things easier than others. So the middle ground is to use former. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> nice. go back to a video yeah. from February. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so you could implement all of the basic questions using former and embed all of this in there, in which case you can run R code in real time. You don't, you're not paying for a server. It's, it's open CPU um, that does the computations for you. So embedding like sheets and stuff like that in there is pretty straightforward. And I don't know about clicks. There might be some way to get screen clicks even, but um, if that requires computing power, then um, that too could probably be recorded there. I have, I'm not sure, but I bet there's a way. There's probably an R package for recording cl screen clicks, I'm sure. I, I'm sure, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, and not, not, I'm, now I'm curious about former for sure, um, but now I'm, I'm sure at this point there's, there's, you know, there's, I think R packages cover a lot of things, but yeah, it's, it's a good point, but. Yeah, or a Python be package yeah. because you can run Python in R. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. A recent had a conversation. It would be good to know how much time they spent because I, in our defense, we talked in your defense, we talked about this. Like, how much time did the people really spend looking at the transparency, or was it just a fact of they were glad to know it was there, or did they actually take time to see was it what they thought it was? And, and I think that was, that was something I, I, I think would be some interesting, cool research in terms of like, yeah, they have it, but like, was it just the fact that it was there? Um, I think it'd be interesting, but um, I did kind of look at like the time per, uh, you know, per page. In this case, I was able to capture how much time they spent on that particular page of Caltrix, which had that embedded HTML file and did see that, you know, obviously it was early on, you know, the first couple of times. And I think, some, you know, I think they tended to, to, to realize that it was mostly the same. Uh, across and so that would decreased, um, but it wasn't a whole lot of time. Like I, I imagine if I would have gone through and just because I'm probably, you know, I've had training in statistics and this is like the the area that I'm really interested in, I'd probably take a while. Um, but I think I think the other motivations on MTIC are also get through the survey fast. So um, yeah, I think that you probably <laughs> run into stuff like that. That's true. Okay, well, great. That was really helpful. Um, I guess you can stop recording whenever you're ready, John. Um,